Hello there, welcome to my channel. My name is Doug and I'm back with another fountain pen review. As I continue to grow out my beard again for my Movember fundraiser in support of men's health, please visit my Movember page and give generously. You can find the link in the description below. I will be donating all of my YouTube membership revenue for the month of November. Thank you. And on to today's fountain pen review. Like last week's very rare Leonardo prototype of Momento Zero Grande Corsani, today's fountain pen is not one that is in my pen budget by any stretch. But again, proud owners of rare and beautiful pens enjoy showing them off for the cameras. So lucky me and lucky you because this is a Nakaya Decapod Writer in Kura Tamanuri Urushi Lacquer and is on loan to me for review from Murray McKay. Tamanuri is a Japanese phrase that means pool painting and speaks to the visual depth of the lacquer. Like looking into a pool, you'll see various depths of color depending on the depth of the water. And the subject matter of Urushi Lacquer is the same. When you look into it, the subject just keeps getting deeper and deeper the further you research it. You've heard of going down the rabbit hole. Well, this is diving into the Tamanuri pool of a fascinating Japanese lacquer technique that goes back 9,000 years. So let's dive in right now. And what I'd like to do today is go over the parts and features of this pen show some size comparisons, some measurements, and then provide a writing sample. After the writing sample, please stay tuned as I will talk about what I like and what I don't like so much about this fountain pen. Since this pen is on loan from Murray, I don't have the original box or packaging that Murray would have received upon buying this pen new. The pen comes in a really nice wooden box wrapped in a kimono pen sleeve with some platinum cartridges. I don't have Murray's pen sleeve, but I do have a kimono pen sleeve that came with a pen BBS fountain pen, so I put in that for safekeeping. So let's take a look at it. The subject of Urushi lacquer is as vast and deep as Japanese history, so I'll not even attempt to give an overview here. I'm new to all of this. Here is the Nakaya Decapod Writer model in Kura Tamanuri Urushi lacquer. Easy for you to say. <laughs> but there are some terms that I had to understand before I could even approach the finish of this Nakaya decapod. As a material, Urushi is obtained from the sap of the lacquer tree, which is a native of southeastern Asia, and specifically the Joboji, Hoboji, I'm not sure, the Hoboji lacquer trees of the Iwate prefecture in Japan about two hours northwest of Tokyo. Japanese Urushi lacquer that is mixed with gold or silver powder is called makie, and when laid over inlaid mother of pearl, it's called raiden. The natural color of the Urushi lacquer is a light brown, but it can be mixed with pigments, typically black, red, and green. The base material of this Nakaya pen is ebonite, but Nakaya has also made Urushi lacquered pens in metal and wood. The ebonite is given its shape, and then the Urushi lacquer is applied in a very careful, time-consuming, multi-layering process. The base color of the Kura Tamanuri lacquer is red, and then the later layers are a transparent black Urushi. Where the lacquer is thin, like on the edges of the decapod, you can see through the black overlayers to the inner red layers. And as the pen ages with use, and in the sunlight, the outer layers get more translucent and bring out more of the red color. This Nakaya Decapod is the Writer's Series. If it has a clip, it's a writer. If it has no clip, it's the Cigar Series. And the Decapod has 10 facets, hence the name Deca. Another slightly larger model of the Decapod gives the 10 facets a twist, hence the name Decapod Twist. Nakaya is owned by Platinum, and is to platinum what Lexus is to Toyota. The name Nakaya represents utmost quality in Japan and is the original name of the Platinum Pen Company when it was founded in 1919. As far as my research takes me, the nibs on the Nakaya pens are platinum nibs, but given individual attention by the pen masters and mistresses of Nakaya for quality assurance. 
Nakaya has a number of different models from what I can see on their website. This Nakaya Decapod writer sells for $750 US on the Nakaya website. So let's look at this pen. It is a cigar shaped pen that tapers from the middle to the thinner ends. From the top, we see the flat top finial, which is a separate ebonite piece that holds the clip, which extends from the cap. I'm surprised that the two pieces don't align properly. So there isn't this edge between the two pieces. You can feel that with your fingers and actually see it from quite a distance. This might make me want to get the cigar series version uh, with no clip because this would all be one piece on the cap. The facets are a natural roll stop in any event. There are 10 facets to the pen which show off the red lower layer Urushi and that lacquer is unbelievably smooth in the hand. It's warm to the touch and although the surface is hard, it feels soft. Any of you that know quality solid wood guitars finished in nitrocellulose lacquer will know what this is like. You have to feel it to know. My Gibson SJ200 just feels different in your hands than a guitar finished with polyester, and the sound difference is noticeable. Of course, you don't play a pen, but you can certainly feel the difference between a plastic pen and an Arushi lacquered ebonite pen. The clip is similar to a platinum clip, but has a more subtle curve to it and is nicely springy and usable. The cap tapers up in a gentle curve to the seam between the cap and the barrel, which again, because of the Arushi layers, has a nice fade from red to black. The barrel tapers down in the same gentle curve to the flat end finial. The cap unscrews with one and a quarter turns to reveal the tapering barrel shaped section that has a small flare towards the 14 karat gold Nakaya number six size nib and ebonite feed. Let's get a closer look at this nib. It is immediately recognizable as a platinum nib with its wide shoulders and flat profile. It has some scroll work, a heart shaped breather hole, Nakaya in what looks like a globe, 14K, and then 585 for the gold content. The Japanese characters say soft medium, and this is a soft medium nib, and then it says Japan on the right shoulder. These cap threads are not sharp at all, but that step down to the barrel is noticeable. But the section is extended out from that step quite a distance, so if you grip close to the nib, you won't feel it, and if you grip further away, you can rest your fingers on the section and your thumb on the barrel. If you have a thumb over death grip, you're not worthy to hold this pen. Anapropes. What is wrong with you? Just teasing. The cap will post, but it's not recommended, as the Arushi lacquer isn't as hard as synthetics like polyester and is prone to scratching. Scratches can be buffed out, but these layers of Arushi are so fine, I would recommend a professional. Better yet, don't scratch the pen. Luckily, the pen is extremely well balanced and light in the hand. It also gives the feeling that it is soft and warm. The section unscrews to reveal the included gold-plated platinum converter and what looks like an aluminum nozzle on the back of the section. And look at the way the converter fits into the section. It butts up against it rather than fits inside a sleeve, like on the platinum. And of course, the Nakaya will take platinum cartridges because it comes with a platinum converter and a box of platinum cartridges. And there is an adapter available to use standard international cartridges with platinum or Nakaya. And there are four start points on this cap thread that will screw down either not aligned or aligned. Now let's look at some size comparisons. And here is the Nakaya Decapod with a Waterman Karen Amber, a Leonardo Momento Zero in Prugna, a Platinum Prefonte, and a Pen BBS 491 in Starry Night Acrylic. Now let's look at them posted. And here they are posted. Of course, I didn't post the Nakaya because Murray would draw and quarter me if I did. Now let's look at them unposted. And here they are unposted. Now let's look at some measurements and I'll be back with a writing sample. And we're back with the writing portion of the review. 
This is Clairefontaine 90 GSM paper. And this is the Nakaya Decapod Writer. And it has a 14 karat gold number six size nib. Let's check the wetness. It's decently wet and the nib is ultra smooth with what I call Platinum's unique feedback. And feedback is not a sound typically, although your nib can sing at you a little bit. Uh, but it is the feeling of the nib on the paper. It's like writing with a graphite pencil on vellum. And it's typical of platinum. My platinum president feels very much like this uh, in terms of the feedback, not in terms of the, the bounce of this nib. It is a really pleasant feedback as you can feel the paper under the nib. It really is a personal taste thing. Some like the glassy smoothness of a pilot nib or the pencil-like feedback of a platinum. It's all up to your taste. I like a touch of feedback as it gives my writing more control on the page. And the ink today is from Pen BBS. And it's Pen BBS number 389 called Cherry. And here is a swatch I did on Tomoe River paper. And you can see it is a deep. Uh, rich cranberry red with a black sheen. Very nice color. I thought it matched the decapod very nicely. As to line variation, well, it's not a flex nib, but boy, it has a lot of really nice bounce to it. You can see that it gives your writing some flair even with just a slight amount of pressure. And the line this nib makes with no pressure is 0.4 millimeters, which makes it a Western extra fine or a Japanese fine. So even though it's marked as a soft medium, the line comes in a full size thinner than a Japanese medium nib, which is between 0.5 and 0.6 millimeters. So we should add soft medium. And for our quote. And for some reverse writing. much thinner and drier, but it actually does it. And some quick writing. No issues whatsoever. Beautiful, beautiful nib. So what do I like and what do I not like about this fountain pen? I like everything about this fountain pen except the price. Of course, I understand the price, but my bank account has a meltdown just thinking about it. Meg, you've probably wondered from time to time how on earth I pay for all my shenanigans. Well, I'm going to show you. This is a robbery! Everybody get on the ground! You can immediately tell that this nib was tuned by experts. In fact, the moment Murray put the pen in my hands, I wrote with it and said, Oh my God. Oh. My. God. He was very pleased about that. It was very generous and trusting of Murray to allow me to borrow this pen to review it. He's not always willing to part with his pens, as you can see from how long I was able to hold his Mont Blanc 146. That's a, uh, that's a 146. 46. 146. 146. Yeah, that's what he meant. Yeah. We were talking about the size of the specialty. Elapsed time, eight seconds. There are only a couple of issues with this pen, and those are with this step down from the barrel and with the seam between the top finial and the cap. The step down is necessary if the pen is to be stepless when capped, so that's understandable. 
but this seam between the top finial and the cap is a bit of a head scratcher. It should be noted that Arushi lacquer is prone to scratching if you are not careful with it. Nakaya recommends against posting the cap for this reason. It's also a fingerprint magnet, so if you suffer from, or as I consider it, are blessed with OCD, you should carry a polished cloth with you before, during, and after writing for cleanup. The nib is spectacular, as is this incredible Kura Tamanuri finish on the pen. And you just have to feel the pen in your hand to understand how luxurious it is. The Nakaya Decapod is truly a work of art that will just keep getting more beautiful with age. And there you have it. Thanks go out to Murray McKay for the generous loan of this exquisite fountain pen for review. If you like this video, please like and subscribe, and don't forget to ring that bell to get instant notifications whenever a new video is posted. And please look in the description for a link to Goldspot Pens, as I'm now an affiliate of the online store, and when you shop at Goldspot using my link, you'll be supporting my channel as well at no extra charge to you. You can also join as a member of my channel for only 99 cents a month, and I guarantee I'll answer your comments in the comment section, and you'll get cool emojis, badges, and sneak peek unboxing videos as well. And that just leaves it for me to say... Thank you. For watching. And that's all she wrote. this.